Welcome to part two of Flip Flop Favorites 2022, which will let us take a deep but kind of efficient dive into my favorite airline and trip related moments from the past year. If you're new here, hi there, my name is Kevin. Normally I feature airline trip reports and upscale hotel reviews from all over the world. But today we're gonna put a pin in that and have a look back at 2022, exploring the award categories that you see on the screen now. I'll also explore last year's stats and talk about what's coming up in 2023. Before we begin, let me just lay a bit of groundwork, something suggested in my last video. On the channel in 2022, I published 46 trip reports, featuring 38 airports, 30 airlines, and a whole bunch of lounges. These are the videos that are up for awards today, but if you're curious, in 2022 in general, I actually had 60 flights taking me to a total of 30 countries. All of those additional flights you'll see in the first couple of months of this year. All right, let's get into it. The first category is all about my favorite airports, and just for this category, they're not ranked. It's just a collection of my favorite airports because each one is so different. We're going to start at the Koh Samui Airport on the island of Koh Samui in Thailand. Charming and open air are the key words here. The airport is actually owned and operated by Bangkok Airways, and is just a delight to be at. You'll take a trolley to your plane, and then of course, board via the stairs. Next up, we have Terminal 3 at Sao Paulo's Guarulhos Airport. I have a fascination with oversized, imposing airport architecture, which is the primary reason it made the list, but also because those giant vertical windows provide for some really incredible views of aircraft on the apron. Next up is the Paul Andrew design Terminal 2F at Paris's Charles de Gaulle Airport. Often called out for being overcrowded and undercooled, and rightfully so, the terminal made its list purely because I absolutely love the architecture. Now we have Singapore's Changi Airport. Many rave about the airport for its butterfly gardens, or pool facilities, or perhaps its free cinema. Honestly, I don't really care about all that, I just love Changi for its efficiency. There are few places on earth that I can count on a smooth and effortless connection, and this is surely one of them. I do have to call them out though for this horrific new carpeting in Terminal 2. Design aside, the carpeting is so thick that you can't easily push a spinner bag on it. Another addition from Thailand is Bangkok's Suwanapum Airport, the larger and newer of the cities too. The airport is certainly not for everyone, and as I've said before, I don't think the architecture represents Thai culture or design really well, but I do love that stark polarizing design. Sometimes it's just the little things that make a big difference, and that's why Barcelona's El Prat Terminal 1 makes my list. The airport design is simply efficient, clear-signed, has a nice selection of lounges, food, and shopping, and a fantastic outdoor terrace to take in a bit of the sun. Last but certainly not least, we have Zurich Airport, partly because I just love to say Flughafen, but also just because it's a gorgeous, timeless terminal with a central and efficient layout, and it even has plenty of outdoor terraces. The next category is short haul lounges, and kicking things off with the bronze flip-flop is the Lufthansa Lounge at Milan's Malpensa Airport. This small space is like a calm, well-designed oasis in the middle of a chaotic airport where lines for a morning coffee could snake the length of a football pitch. Taking the silver flip-flop is the Pau Casals Lounge in the same Barcelona Terminal 1 that I just mentioned before. I've had the pleasure of visiting this spot a few times last year and thoroughly enjoyed it for its variety of seating options, sheer size, and always well-stocked assortment of really fresh foods. Coming in first, and potentially the easiest decision in this entire video, was the Air France Lounge in Charles de Gaulle's Terminal 2F. Keep in mind that this new lounge, which was recently opened after being built on an extension into the apron, is only for Schengen Zone flights. A lounge this big and beautiful, only for flights under, what, three hours? Built over two levels, it does get crowded, but there's a near endless supply of seating, fantastic fresh food, expansive apron views, and of course, free-flowing champagne wherever you look. Next, we're gonna turn our focus to the long haul lounges. Of course, some of these are available for short flights as well, but I think you get the point. With an honorable mention is the Latam Lounge in Sao Paulo. With the exception of missing some true working spaces and desks, the lounge really is much nicer than I would have ever expected. Loads of seating areas, a decent selection of hot and cold food on offer, a full bar, and very well thought out bathroom designs where each stall is its own bathroom. 
really great for just getting yourself together on long layovers. Taking the bronze is the Virgin Atlantic Clubhouse at JFK's Terminal 4. The lounge is equal parts fantastic airport lounge and non-airport loungy bar. There are plenty of seating options on offer, and they make one hell of a chicken sandwich, among many other things, of course. Taking the silver is the Singapore Airlines Silver Chris Lounge in Changi's Terminal 3, newly opened in November of 2021 following a three-year-long $37 million US dollar renovation. The lounge is huge and always bustling, but you'll never have a problem finding a comfortable seat or working space. There's also plenty of local and Western food options on offer and a full bar. These might be anecdotal, but the only area I can see it falls short is its showers. On the two occasions which I wanted one, the wait times were between 60 and 90 minutes, which simply isn't good enough for a lounge like this. Taking first place is the Al Morjan Business Class Lounge by Qatar Airways in Doha. Beyond being visually stunning, the lounge serves so many different functions it would be impossible to cover it all in this short clip. On offer, you had private relaxing rooms, massive shower suites with diptyque amenities, a huge sandwich bar, loads of seating throughout, and most impressively, a giant a la carte dining restaurant, which lives up to Qatar's high standards. Only downside is this place gets very busy as departure banks approach. If you have an extended layover, make sure you kind of make a plan out for your stay to make sure that you're able to take advantage of all the facilities that you're gonna need. Coming up next are my favorite amenity kits and taking the bronze, well, it might not look like much, but it's just one of the more useful pouches that I've ever gotten on a plane and I reuse it constantly. Next up, the silver goes to Etihad for their yellow Aqua de Parma kit, which is provided on flights departing Abu Dhabi. When it comes to amenity kits, I really only care about two things, the design and functionality of the pouch itself and the skincare or unique products inside. The socks, earplugs, eye masks, and the like, I really don't care about. An easy first gives the gold flip-flop to Qatar's comprehensive diptyque amenity kits. On my recent flight to Doha, it came in a nice paper gift box. The one I much prefer, though, was in the leatherette pouch that I got on my flight departing Doha. The contents of both are identical. Next up, we have my favorite out-the-window views. The first one, I apologize for the overzealous hyperspeed, but I had to settle for a clip of a clip. Either way though, quite the incredible views approaching Rio de Janeiro's Galeão Airport. In second was an incredible view which captivated the crew as much as it did me, flying directly over Buenos Aires as we approached Ezeza Airport to the southwest of the city. In first, we have an incredible little fifth freedom flight. You already know that it's going to be a beautiful departure from Milan's Malpensa when the mountains are already in view from the airport. And once we were in the air, it certainly did not disappoint. Let's explore economy seats a bit. Admittedly, I didn't fly that much long haul on economy flights last year, but I have plenty in my life, so I know that these seats are near as good as you're gonna get. Taking the bronze is Delta's Comfort Plus seats. The extra legroom was nice, but they made it to the list for their smart design and top-notch entertainment system. In second place, we have the Air France seat from the A220. Full disclosure that this is actually the business class seat, but on these planes, the seats are identical to economy, just with a bit more legroom, so I think it's a fair call. The seats are very thoughtfully designed with a fully functional headrest, USB-C ports, and a variety of pouches to store your gear. The only reason this seat didn't take first is because it lacked IFE. And in first, there's the offering from Turkish Airlines. Of course, it's nice to have unlimited legroom, but the seat actually made it to this list for its comfort, functionality, and included entertainment. Now we're gonna take a look at economy class meal services. Keynote here, I'm focusing on flavor and only flavor for these economy services. In third place, we have Singapore Airlines new short haul food concept, which I'll admit was a lot better than it looked. That container was packed full of a really tasty egg dish. Taking the silver flip-flop is my frequent dark horse, Vietnam Airlines, serving up a really, really good beef curry on a flight from Saigon to Jakarta. With an easy win in this category, it's Turkish Airlines. I've only had one Turkish Airlines economy flight on the channel, but I have flown with them within Europe three other times, 
And each time, the food is of a really high standard, and the main dishes are more or less the same that you're going to get in business class. I'll round it out with some pretty decent Turkish Cabernet. This next category is a lot harder than you'd think to capture well, since iPhone microphones tend to confuse engine sounds with background noise, which it reduces. So I'll just let this one speak for itself. Put the volume up. Next up is my all-time channel or no channel, I don't care what airlines or class you're flying, best in-flight blanket from Etihad Airways. I would buy these if I could. Unfortunately, they're being phased out for a new design or such and such. Their pillowy soft fluffiness will be dearly missed. Speaking though of pillowy soft, next up we have the best pillows of the year with two entries. The first on board British Airways business class and the second being on Singapore Airlines business class. Hospitality. It's just impossible to show you, so you're going to need to take my word for these next couple. Coming in third is Swiss with an incredibly friendly Zurich-based crew on a flight to Athens. Not only did I get the full Swiss gear treatment, but I also had quite a nice conversation with the crew in the galley, a wonderful crew that clearly enjoyed their jobs. Coming in second is Qatar Airways from Philadelphia to Doha. Qatar Airways crew generally range between like okay and phenomenal. And Min, my attendant for this flight, was a 10 out of 10. I don't normally remember crew names, if I'm honest, I'm bad with names in general. But Min stuck with me. She was warm, engaging, laid back, but attentive. I felt equally at home and in a really special place from the moment that I stepped on board. Coming in first were a pair of flight attendants in business class on a flight from Paris to Helsinki. Air France gets crapped on constantly, but I always found their crew to be really pleasant. But today took the cake. Again, there's no way to show this visually, but they were just extremely thoughtful, detail-oriented, and kind. As I said in the original video, if I could relive this short flight on a loop, I'd gladly do so. Next up, we have the best business class seats for a narrow-body plane, and hold up! Before I even show you what's coming, I need to explain. I'm giving an honorable mention here to American Airlines for their 737 MAX 8 seats which are essentially the same seat as their wide-body premium economy. I include this well-designed and comfortable seat simply because of the amount of complaining that I see about seats like this online in general. It's never-ending. I just don't understand the hate for these kind of seats. Most seats that I had in this category last year are pretty similar to the one I just showed you, so I'm skipping to the gold here with Gulf Air for their A320neo seats. How's that for not holding a grudge? These seats are beautifully outfitted and just so well designed. Plenty of legroom, storage spots hidden around the seat, the most comfortable seating position when you put it into the cradle mode, and a ginormous IFE screen. I hope I can see this seat on many more aircraft in the future. Now we're going to head into the short haul business class meal service, and we're starting off with Air France. This is a more or less standard assortment for them, and generally served cold on purpose. A main dish, cheese, and a dessert, along with, of course, your choice of drinks. It was delicious across the board, but the real reason that I appreciate it is for how fresh and devoid of processed, prepackaged food it is. European airlines in general lately, I find wipe the floor with their American counterparts with food for this very specific reason. Coming in second is my breakfast and snack service on a five-hour flight from Saigon to Tokyo on a and &A. For reference, under six hours is my personal definition of short haul. The main course was a selection of Zensai appetizers, all of which were delicious, served alongside a soy sauce poached seafood main with fresh fruit and miso soup on the side. Following this was coffee and tea service and dessert. Last up, just for giggles, we had a warming bowl of udon. One area where a and far outperforms Japan Airlines, instant pot noodles. Coming in with the gold, yes, that's right, a second award for American Airlines. I'll give you a moment to pick up your jaws from the floor. This was just the best food that I've had on an American carrier in at least the past five years or so. Shortly after departing Los Angeles, hot towels and beverages were served, and we were given a choice of one of four mains. Served up with a beautifully plated fruit plate, I chose the breakfast enchilada served with black beans and sausage. 
If that wasn't enough, then they came around the cabin with warm biscuits, likely the best bread option that I've ever had in the air. Around an hour before landing, fruit and cheese plates were served along with warm chocolate chip cookies. What's not to like, especially considering this is a four hour flight. Our third to last category is for wide body business class seats. I'm giving an honorable mention here to LATAM 777-300ERs, specifically and only for seats 8 Alpha and 8 Lima. Look at all of this space. You could square dance. It's a great seat in general, a version of the Vantage XL seat. But these two bulkhead seats offer so much more space. You can see a more standard seat, which was just across from me. In third place, Japan Airlines Apex Suites. Actually, I would say any Apex Suites in general, but I just prefer them on a 777 a little bit more because they're a little bit wider. I know these seats are commonly criticized as being claustrophobic because of the high walls and the long, narrow shape. I just simply don't agree. I'm a really fussy sleeper, and I generally don't even try to sleep in a lay flat position on planes because I like elbow room. I had my best ever six hours of straight sleep in the sky on this flight though. It's simply a near proper bed. The only drawbacks are a lack of storage and the screen is like a mile away. Second place here is going to Qatar Airways Q Suites, specifically on the 777 as they're a little bit wider than on the A350s. The suites are just really, really, really well laid out. There's plenty of storage spaces and creature comforts. If I was one of those people that could sleep like a mummy in a coffin, you know, those people that you sleep on your back, arms crossed, so little movement that your partner questions on a daily basis if you're still alive. If I was one of those sleepers, then this would be taking the gold. It's just a super pleasant space to be in with beautiful finishes and high quality materials. And of course they have their own doors to make it a little more intimate and special. I'm someone who thinks that most carriers installing doors on reverse herringbone or Vantage XL seats have a pretty gimmicky result, but not here. They're tall enough to actually make a difference. Luckily for me, the only opinion that matters today is mine, because my choice for the gold is certainly not what most people would agree with. On Singapore Airlines A350s or 777s, their bulkhead seats are my absolute favorite business class seat from the past year. You can see why the bulkheads are the way to go. In the regular seats, there's just a lot less wiggle room. For the tallest of you out there, choose a bulkhead in the center section which does sport an extra inch or two of length. But no matter which seat you choose, the width is certainly industry leading and one of the reasons why it's so comfortable to me. You can treat the seat more like a sofa than a constricting chair. You can move around and find a variety of seating positions. Beyond the fact that many don't like these seats because of the angle that you need to sleep at, they also don't like them for the fact that the seats flip forward to fold into the full flat bed position. This is actually something that I love. When you fold it down, it's always outfitted with a fresh mattress pad and you don't need to sleep on the same surface that someone else just sat on for the past 18 hours. And lastly, my favorite feature of the seat, put it into bed mode and then sit in it. The interior of the seat's shell is lined and padded and makes for a very comfortable lounge position, not too dissimilar from Finnair's new non-reclining seats. Next up, we have my favorite individual business class courses from the year. With an honorable mention, we have the always welcome satay service from Singapore Airlines. In third place, focusing on taste alone here as I realize it looks like a hot mess, this was the best beef dish that I've had all year in the air from Latam. Slow cooked beef with red wine sauce, pureed carrots, sauteed collard greens, and roasted farofa with red onion. Taking the silver was this wonderfully jiggly Bavarian style pork belly from Singapore Airlines on a flight from Frankfurt. The turbulence really does show off how well cooked it is, melting in your mouth. If you love Singapore Airlines, then you'll be happy to know that I've got six flights with them coming in the next year. In first place is a dish that I never even considered to be possible as airline food. Shrimp and grits on Qatar Airways. The grits were creamy, the gravy velvety and savory, the shrimp flavorful and snappy, and the cornbread was shockingly moist. I'd eat this every day if I could, even on the ground. So far, I have two more long haul Qatar flights booked for this year. And our final category, business class meal service, here focusing on the entire service throughout the flight. With two standouts far ahead of the rest of the pack, we're gonna start out with the silver flip-flop, which went to Japan Airlines for their Japanese menu from Haneda to JFK. Everything from the presentation, to the quality, to the care and plating, and not to mention the taste were really impressive. 
I even enjoyed salmon for the first time in my life on a plane. There were a variety of mid-flight snacks available, which turned out to be some sizable sandwiches actually, including my beloved katsu. Then prior to landing, there was a final Wagyu beef set meal. In 2023, I've got two flights on Japan Airlines booked, which I booked precisely 359 days in advance to ensure I secured my first class seats. I also have first class booked this year in ANA's new first class cabin. And when you see the price that I paid for that first class sector, your jaws will again hit the floor. Taking the crown jewel of this year's Flip Flop Favorites video is the meal service aboard Qatar Airways from Philadelphia to Doha. From the extensive menu, I selected, well, an extensive selection. Served with a good dose of turbulence, it started off with a decadent lobster bisque, followed by salmon three ways and chicken harriyali. Of course, it wouldn't be a complete meal without a full fruit, cheese, and port course, and then of course a chocolate and praline crunch cake. There were other hot foods available for snacks, actually, all the food is dine on demand, but I just settled for some chips mid-flight as I had a very hearty breakfast coming in the morning. The breakfast was copious amounts of iced Americanos with a fruit smoothie, chilaquiles, a yogurt parfait, delicious pastries, and of course my favorite shrimp and grits. Sorry I ran through that, but I wanted a moment to touch on my plans for 2023. In my favorite hotel videos, I erroneously said that I had 114 videos in queue. The correct number is actually 148, combining what I recently shot in December, plus all of my bookings for 2023. Of those 148 are 70 trip reports on 38 different airlines touching 49 airports. I have every possible class of service booked as well, with 27 economy flights, 7 premium economy, 31 in business class, and at least 5 but possibly up to 7 true first class flights. As always, I really hope that you enjoy the content that I put out here and thank you for your support getting the channel to where it is today. And I can't do anything but look forward to where it's going to be a year from today. Wishing everyone a happy new year and a safe and prosperous Lunar New Year.